So let's see if we can do a quick demo on technical hatching. We've got our section drawings from before. We have our vertical section projected here and our plan section projected there. And I want to make these perimeters stand out just a little bit stronger. And so one technique for doing that is cross hatching, technical hatching. And we're going to use our triangle to perform that hatch on the 45 in this case. You can do it at different angles, but for this drawing it probably makes sense at the 45. And I'm just going to do it at a grain that goes across my drawing. Now, in the ideal condition, you want these lines that we're going to draw and do a quick one over here. Right? So a cross hatch would be a series of parallel, evenly spaced lines that kind of start to make a tone or texture there. Now it's a bit challenging to do that freehand and have them be evenly spaced. So we might need to come up with a few ways to help us out. One can be drawing a guideline here to follow with my triangle. I can just make a guideline and I can measure out my hatching distance. You want to go pretty tight here so that it's easy to work with. You could also lock my ruler in place and just use my ruler. Um, I'm going to do some quick measurements uh, at 1 16th spacing. Now this 1 16th spacing will not be the space between my hatch lines, but instead the space between each line start and end point, which means that it'll end up being a little bit different. So I just did a few because I want to do a little test one out to the side here, and then we'll come in and actually do them for our piece. But you see like if I do them here, they're not going to reach my object, and so I might as well you know, recalibrate my measuring, but I just want to start off. I can line up with each of those points, draw a line, move it over. And just like your first exercise, where you had to, you want to be careful because it's really hard to fix issues here, so make sure our tool is well locked. It both sides of this really tightened in place. And so they're starting to get much better consistency there except that one place where my thing is wobbling a little bit. So that's a good way to start. And you can also use your ruler, set it right here and have it really locked in there and use that as your guide and really just trust it, right? Like we'll put it, so that's always starting at the corner at 1 16th, we'll do that. But with a little bit of practice and patience, you can really add a lot of dimension to a drawing. You don't need to do this too heavy. It can be pretty light. Oops, and my ruler moved, which now I'm stuck in a bind. Just try to get it back aligned. where we have a big, like a small space to fill and a large gap between the line. So their inconsistencies are much smaller if there's an air. If you're trying to fill like a whole square with hatch, you have to really take your time there. Because it can be so easy to see any airs. This is something you want to take into consideration of when you'll use it what it's going to communicate for your drawing. You can also use like a grid or graph paper underlay with a really fine grid to help with this. And finding a mechanism, a tool, that can help with the measuring can make it go a lot faster as you get used to the spacing. We have some consistency, but hopefully you can already see that it's filling that in and making it stand out a little bit more from everything else on the page. So this becomes the place we're really looking, just like the pepper being cut in. Now, if we wanted to try that out, maybe in a larger area, um, this doesn't really have anything right now to do with our cue. But let's say I want to kind of differentiate this void space from this surface. 
Now something to consider here is the direction I'll be hatching. And if they go in this direction, like this, they'll kind of build from one edge, which talks about maybe surface. If I go against that edge, it'll help to not uh, kind of interfere with it. You can also go horizontal and vertical, depending on what you're working with. I'm going to actually do this one at a 45 in this direction. And to set that up, I feel it's probably best here is just to have a little guideline outside of my object for such a, a long sequence of these things. And you can pick any dimension on here, inches, sixteenths, millimeters, sixteenths seems a little bit easier. We'll just put it right below. Kind of gauge your time for what you're going to do with this to consider that if you wanted to fill this area completely with parallel lines right next to each other to make it solid black, which is another way to do crochet, as we'll say here, um, it might take about one hour per square inch. Maybe a little faster, which is what I seem to remember when I did this more often. And that it takes a good amount of time. Right here. Um, but since we're not doing it quite that dense, oops, I'll need a few more. Again, this doesn't have to be very heavy, as long as you have a good dense spacing. I guess that 1 16th is probably the biggest you really want to go before the pattern will start to look like stripes or graphics rather than a tone or hatch that we're looking for. You know, to kind of, if you have a consistency of surface and too big of gaps will end up making, making that look a little cartoony and not communicate a song. You still sometimes get some inconsistencies there. You want to minimize those as much as possible, but they're going to happen. And if you notice it right away, you might be able to come back through with your eraser shield and fix it really quick. If you've drawn a few lines already, you could try to erase a good chunk and start again, but maybe just keep drawing through I hope that the intensity of all of it will make it kind of disappear. And if it's just like a, a thickness wobble here and there, that's usually going to be the case. We'll always see it, but it will blend in to the consistency a little. If it's like your tool moves and you draw an errant line, then you're probably going to want to try to fix it because that will be more jarring. Again, we're looking for kind of a soft, Consistent, even tone. You can breathe. Deep breaths. Really just get into it. And remember that you can't do this at the last minute. It takes a good amount of attention and time and patience to do it without it starting to look bad. And I would suggest that if it's late and you haven't gotten to this, the better option is Go ahead and make sure your cut line weights, your perimeter lines are good and heavy so it's really clear what is cut through and what is seen in elevation. Do not make your drawing a mess with some bad hatching. You can always come back later on and add the hatching in when you're more alert and focused. Oh, but it's not so bad. Right? We can see there's a space there and there and one there that got a little off, but when you stand back a ways from it, it gets pretty consistent and clear. And this really makes a difference in how we see this shape distinguished from this background shape. Now this would be as if I cut through a more solid block with the corner cut off, um, which is a way to change the design. Something different than this. This one over here is much more how I cut through this solid material at the edge, and then this is a void. This is an edge I see in the background, and there's nothing else around. So that's adding tone by hatching. 
it's a kind of meditative process of architectural drawing. It can really help make a strong difference in how we quickly read the inside and outside, the solid and the void, the composition of your drawing. So please take the time to practice it and get pretty good at that nice, even, consistent spacing.